This snippet is an introduction to Sketchflow. My name is Jeremy Osborne, presenting from AGI Training for Microsoft. Sketchflow offers prototyping features that allow anyone to quickly map out the flow of an application, as well as the layout, user interface, and transitions from one state of the application to another. Traditionally, the prototyping process works best when the process is quick, easy, and disposable, like a hand-drawn sketch. Of course, hand-drawn sketches have been around for a while, and Sketchflow maintains the benefits of sketches, but also addresses some of the challenges when creating prototypes for interactive applications. A Sketchflow project generally begins with a Sketchflow map that represents the interactive flow of an application. So for example, this project here currently has around a dozen screens. Currently we're on the Start screen here. You can think of each screen as a virtual whiteboard on which you can draw, write, or add pre-built shapes and user interface controls using the sketch style appearance. For example, here we can see a chat window which was built with the hand-drawn sketch style. A hand-drawn style enables clients to concentrate on the overall concept of a solution instead of focusing too early on the detail. If we look here on the community page, we can see that Sketchflow isn't meant to replace hand sketches. In fact, sometimes the best way to communicate a concept is to look for the simplest solution. In this screen, the author scanned a paper sketch and then imported this as an image. Within the Sketchflow map panel, we can see two categories of screens. Most of these screens are connected by blue lines and arrows, so screens can have outgoing connections, ingoing connections, or no connection at all. There's also a second type of screen called a component. So here we can see the nav bar. If we double click on this, we can see that this menu is actually a component. This component has been added to a number of different pages. So components are reusable elements. Any changes made to this original are reflected throughout the project. However, Sketchflow isn't just about authoring. It also integrates a feedback process that's key to the evolution of a product or an application. I'm now going to go into the Sketchflow player. The Sketchflow player allows anyone with a web browser and the Silverlight plugin to review and add feedback to a project. So a client or team member can open your project and add feedback via notes or even draw on the screen to get their point across. So if I go here to the very last page, which is our checkout page, we can see some feedback that a client or a team member has added asking the author to add an email field. Located on the left-hand corner is a feedback panel, which gives us a little bit more information than just the visual cues. This feedback is exported from the player and then imported back into Sketchflow, where the original author can review the feedback and make changes if needed. So going back to the original screen, we can look within the checkout section. We can go ahead and turn on feedback by choosing Window, Feedback. And here we can see that the feedback that the client or the team member added has automatically been integrated into our Sketchflow project. I'll return to the player for a moment here so we can see how Sketchflow is capable of illustrating interactive prototypes in a way that would be difficult with a traditional sketch. For example, here we can see the animation of a chat window sliding in from the right. This would be a very difficult concept to illustrate traditionally. You can also create more sophisticated animations in Sketchflow as well. Here we have a more advanced animation that demonstrates the drag and drop behavior your team might want in the final application. Sketchflow allows you to create animations in the Sketchflow Animation panel, and also allows you to create different states of a page using the States panel. There are also more advanced features that might come in handy. For example, here on the Boards page, we have an interactive list box. This list box is actually being populated by sample data. Going back to Blend here for a moment and then going to the Boards page, here we can see our Sketchflow list box and it's currently being populated with our sample data located here in the Data tab itself. Sample data is as customizable as you need it to be. You can either use the built-in sample data from Sketchflow or add your own by importing an XML file. Going back to the Sketchflow player, Another feature in Sketchflow is the ability to use behaviors. Behaviors are pieces of code that can be applied to a project easily. There are a few behaviors that come with Sketchflow, such as the ability to enable buttons to activate animations or navigate to other pages. Here I click on that checkout page, I click back, and I can now go back to the original page. Once a Sketchflow project is complete, it can be packaged and uploaded to a website for client review and feedback. Additionally, you have the ability to export a Sketchflow project to a Microsoft Word document. 
a table of contents is automatically generated. All the screens within the project are also reproduced here in the document. So in this snippet, you've had a chance to see how Sketchflow enables designers and developers to quickly build interactive prototypes. Additionally, you've seen how clients can use the Sketchflow player to easily navigate a prototype, test different scenarios, and provide feedback. Thank you for now. My name is Jeremy Osborne, presenting from AGI Training for Microsoft.